Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be unboxing and reviewing this Midland GMRS two-way radio. All right, so I am out at a park today because one, we're gonna be testing these guys outdoors and to see the range, but also, um, I, uh, my apartment is in all sorts of disarray because I'm in the process of moving across the country. And with that process, I wanted to be able to communicate back and forth with my wife because we're going to be in separate vehicles driving. And sometimes there might not be cell phone reception. So I found these radios that are up to 36 mile range. So we're going to put that to the test. I understand that that is in a perfect scenario like mountain peak to mountain peak where there's no obstructions in between, but I want to put that to the test and see how far I can actually go in a modern environment. One thing to note with these radios is you do need to register with the FCC on these ones. If you have two radios, you can use them within your household. So I can register one FCC account and it'll cover everyone in my household. So me, my wife, things like that, I can radio back and forth with her without having to get a second registration. There is a fee associated with that, but it is much more affordable than it used to be. So let's just go ahead and dive in on the unboxing here, and then we'll go through the setup process and things like that. So you can see here the outside of the box and all of the things that it does advertise. We got our GXT1000 is this model and all of its features. We open up the top tabs here and we can slide our box right out. It's all contained in a plastic packaging here. It opens up like a book and we have two headsets with microphones. You can see here we have a little microphone with an earpiece that latches over the top of your ear here. And then we have our Midland radio here. We have a little latch here to clip on or volume rocker, we have our push to talk. And then over here, this is a door that will open up to add additional plugs, such as your headset. We have our speaker grill here on the front and then our microphone right here as well, if you choose to use it just handheld. Over here on the so this other side is all of our accessories. So we have our car charger adapter, our charging base, where we'll plug in that car charger and we can charge both at the same time. As well as a guide on how to use it and what everything means. This will actually probably come in quite handy later. Down here at the bottom we have our plug for the wall. If you plug this into a wall, we have a standard 110 outlet style here. And then down at the very bottom are our batteries to the radio. This can also be subsidized with five AAA batteries. So if these batteries die and you don't have a way to recharge them, you can use five AAA batteries. And then up at the very top, we also have our clips that'll clip onto the back of our radio. Installing that is as simple as just sliding down till it clicks. Nice. To release the clip, there's a little tab, I don't know if you can quite see it right here. You'll push towards the outside and then slide it up. Show it from this angle. We'll push towards the outside and then push up. To change the battery, there's a little latch here on the door that then will swing up to be able to insert our batteries. You can see right here, you have all of the contacts. The fourth, so it actually only takes four AAA batteries. Um, and there's a fourth one that will slide up in here, so they'll be individually stacked, but your battery pack comes with an extra tall standout to go in that hole, and then it connects from here to there for you. And then you'll just slide the top back on, latch the back, and we're ready to run. All right, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is set up our uh, FCC licensing. So first thing we're gonna need is our FNR registration. Uh, this will give us our FNR license number that we can then go into and uh, 
register our licenses like the GMRS license. So first thing we're going to do is go to this apps.fcc.gov link down in the description of this video and you'll enter in and fill out that form. Let's go ahead and do that together real quick. So I opened this up in Google Chrome on my phone and I actually requested it to be shown as a desktop site. Uh, the mobile friendly version is a little funny and it doesn't seem to like the uh, captcha that prevents like robots from creating accounts. All right guys, let's go through this whole process together. So first thing you're gonna do is you will need a username. So we're gonna go to this apps.fcc.gov slash course slash user login. Go to register and then you'll create your username which is just putting in your email check availability to make sure it's not already registered and then you'll create your password next we'll need to put in your legal information this is going to be your legal name things like that as well as a secondary email is recommended then you'll put in your phone number country code is going to be a plus one if you're in the united states and then you can choose from your security question there are a bunch of options on what you can use for your security question and then put in your answer there and click create an account. Once you click create an account, it will then create an account for you and it'll send you a confirmation email. You'll then verify your email there and then come back to this page here. You'll then log in with that username and password that you just created. From there, we'll then just say register new FRN. So we'll click on that and then you'll say whether you're an entity as a corporation or you're an individual. I'm an individual. Is this contact address United States or its territories? Yes. So whether you're, you're identifying whether your contact address is in the United States or not. And then continue. And then we'll select CORE's FRN registration unless you fit under the uh, restricted use FRN. We're going to go with cores. Then you'll hit continue. From there, it'll take you here to the FCC registration page where you can get a new FRN registration number. This is where you'll fill out all your personal information again, um, including your social security number. And then after this page, you'll hit submit. And then it'll take you to this page where right up here behind this blur is going to be your FRN number not blurred. You'll then copy that FRN number and paste it here on this page, the license manager. In place of the FCC registration number, you'll put in your FRN number and then use your same FCC password right here and hit submit. And that'll take you here to this page. From here, you'll go to the top left corner and click on apply for a new license. And then you'll select the service type if you scroll all the way to the bottom. And at the very bottom here, you can see it says ZA general mobile radio that is gmrs that's the one you want to select you'll then click continue answer the questions and then it'll take you to this page here from here you will then fill out the form like normal and hit continue just like every other form you're going to, have to fill it out again no they're not smart enough to connect these apparently and then it will take you to this next page where we'll need basic qualification information have you ever been convicted of a felony? And then we just need to pay the $35 fee. You'll click continue to certify. It used to be a much more expensive fee, now it's only $35. We'll then put in our name and title for our signature. And now we'll continue to payment options. Use your FRN number to log in. It'll automatically populate the payment that's due for your license. So click on the blue make payment on the right there. And then there are various different ways to make this payment. I just chose the easiest one, which is a pay by a credit card or debit card. And once your payment information is complete, and that should be it. You should be all registered and good to go on your Midland radios to use the GMRS radios. Let's go ahead and uh, test these guys out. So we're gonna go ahead and turn these guys on. Radio check. Radio check. All right, you guys, I'm in front of our basement apartment here. I'm gonna start by doing a quick test in the front yard. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and go across the street. All right, I'm across the street. I don't imagine this is gonna be, I don't know, change anything, but all right, I'm across the street. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Nice. 
All right, now we're gonna go to the other side of this park over here. All right, I made it to the gazebo across, halfway across the park. I don't imagine there's a change, but uh, does everything sound okay? Yep, loud and clear. All right, now I am as much in the opposite side of this park as I can get. I'm in a corner. There is a whole house in between us. Uh, let's see how it sounds. All right, I am on the opposite side of a park. Can, uh, do, I, do I still sound okay? Yeah, I'm breaking up or anything. Perfect. All right, now let's really put this to the test by driving down the road. All right, you guys, I'm now in the car. I am exactly one mile away. Let's see how it is. I am one mile away over by the shaved ice place. Can you tell any sound difference? Oh, I got a click. Is that you? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, weird. I'm... Okay. I wonder if it's because I was right next to a power transformer. So into a basement and down the road, we're losing a lot and it's with the an inside of a car. I know that a metal cage will definitely affect that. Let's, let's try something here. Okay, I am nine tenths of a mile away. Can you hear me okay? There's a lot of interference. I don't know if it's from the car or just like all of the buildings and houses. Oh, I got a little bit of something. Say that it again, it didn't come in very clear. Yeah, I'm not even able to understand a mile away. That's weird. Let's move closer to see where we start to get a clear audio. All right, I am now eight tenths of a mile away, so I came a little bit closer. Does it sound any better? Yeah, it sounds a lot better. Oh my gosh, like huge difference. I wonder if it has to do with the obstructions. Can you run out onto like the front lawn for a second and see if it gets better? Are you on the front lawn now? Um, I think at the top of the steps. You're at the top of the steps? Okay, I'm gonna move a little further away to see if that helps where there's gonna be less obstructions. Can you move towards the street? Can you move towards the street? Yeah, I'll turn that. All right, can you hear me now? Okay, so less obstructions. So she went from downstairs in a basement to out by the mailbox, and I can hear her just find a mile away. So now we're gonna move a little bit further away. Are you back outside? Yeah, I am. Did you not hear that? Oh, no, now I did, though. You sound super clear. I'm on the opposite side of the road from you, but it, you're by the mailbox, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm on the front lawn, but... It's impressive how much obstructions can make a difference on these guys. So I'm a mile and a quarter away, and that conversation was a little bit fuzzy, and we're starting to push the limits where uh, this is our line of sight here. Um, so she is down this road a mile and a quarter on the left side. All right, you guys. Um, the road trip is over. I have, I feel like I've thoroughly put these guys to the test. Uh, these radios, uh, let me go ahead and grab one just to, just to hold in my hand while we talk about it. But this Midland radio, I feel like it underperformed on the range test. Um, but we kind of saw that coming when we did the initial test and we only got a, about a mile in town um, and it was even pushing it at a mile then. Um, on our trip, even in cars, out on the roads, far away from everyone and everything else, about a mile is all we reached. A lot of times my wife would go ahead in her car and find uh, cost-effective gas. You find the cheapest gas in the area as we're going. I'd say, hey, I got this many miles, find me gas that's in that area, that's within that, the best price of gas. And so she'd drive ahead, make sure the prices were good, she'd fill up. By the time she finished filling up, I'd usually catch up and uh, fill up my truck, and then we'd both leave to the next stop. Um, 
But uh, they did end up working out pretty well. It was helpful um, because when I was getting close, I could start saying like, hey, I'm getting off the freeway and she would hear that because it's usually within about a mile of the freeway is where we would find our gas stop. Or um, I think the one time where we got the most range was somewhere out in the mountains of Wyoming. There was a long stretch where the road curved to the right and then came back left as it climbed up a hill. And so I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna try it. And I was able to hear them crystal clear. And I think at that point, they were about six miles away, which um, they quickly lost range. I think they either crested the hill or um, were just too far and there was too much interference of the metal cage of a car and things like that. Those things definitely inhibit the range of these radios. If you want to get more range, you definitely should start looking into getting your ham audio operator license. I'm told you can actually take a class and get it done in a day if you can find a local ham operator. And I actually have a ham radio here in the back. Many people have actually noticed it and mentioned it. Um, it's a Bofang. I don't use it. I only listen on it. I, uh, I used to keep a uh, list of local stations when I was living in Utah of you know, repeaters that uh, people would meet on and have, you know, hang out, chats, whatever. And if I had time or thought about it, I'd jump in and just listen in on the conversation. But um, I know I haven't used this one yet, but it is good to have in an emergency situation because you are able to use it without a license in an emergency. Um, these guys, I can use it anytime with my $35 fee. You don't have to take a class. You don't have to pass a test. Just sign up and pay your $35 fee. It used to be 75, so prices have gone down. Prices have gone down, and I think it's because they're trying to make it more accessible for more people. Let's go ahead and look at the prices on these guys. All right, as you can see, I purchased this back on July 13th, um, and there are a few different versions. You get the different colors, or you can buy a single one. You can get the triple set, things like that, but uh, I just got the simple black two pair right here. Let's go ahead and check out our price history on these guys. All right, so here on the Honey Browser extension, I can go ahead and list out to 120 days and show the sales. It looks like they do have quick flash sales at $64.99, $64.99, and $64.99. So as you can see here on Honey, uh, price histories tend to be much more fluctuating on uh, a lot of the other products that I've looked at here on Amazon, but this one seems to be pretty steady at that $69.99. Every once in a while, they'll have a quick sale where things drop down to that really great price of $64.99. Um, but be careful, don't get swindled by the guys trying to sell it for $79.99. It's just another person trying to sell the same item for a higher price is all. So don't be going out and buying those ones. Overall, is this a product that I think is worth it? I say yes. I would definitely keep something like this in my emergency kit or my outdoors kit. If I ever go camping, I'd take something like this with me so that if I wanna go for a hike or if I wanna go somewhere else and like I can leave the rest of the group and still be talking to them or we can break up into a couple of groups and still have contact with the other group and say, hey, we need this or hey, we don't have that or hey, we're on our way back or I found the sweetest swimming hole, let's all meet over here. <laughs> um, or even in an emergency situation, this could be a great way to communicate when other things are down, like cell phone towers, things like that. So just make sure you keep these guys charged up. If you have questions on these radios or the process, I'll be honest, the uh, my video got a little bit iffy there on my uh, setup process just because I was still wandering around trying to figure things out. So the video I ended up making for you hopefully makes sense and is easy enough for you to navigate. I'll have links down in the description below for you to access those pages that you need to be able to register to get your GMRS license. If you have other questions or recommendations for a next video, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer those as soon as I can. And if I've earned it, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.